He came in on fire, the governor of the great state of Ohio, John Kasich here, the Republican presidential candidate, came in, started shooting hoops, got on the golf simulator, hit a couple of nice uh, pitching weds, uh, par three, uh, seventh at Pebble. This is fun. You should have you should have this, uh, you know, in Washington, D.C. How do you know I don't? <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> now, you were you're talking a pretty good game there with basketball. Well, look, you know, we used to play the congressional basketball game. It was really fun. And actually, they were good players. Uh, a lot of them played in college. So we played against McMillan after he had a triple-double in the NBA the year before, and we ended up beating him. So and Lefty Drizel was the uh, announcer, and he selected me as the MVP. It was one of the greatest moments of my lifetime. <laughs> now, McMillan played at Maryland, went to the yep. NBA, yep. 6'11". And really good player. Yeah. He was a, he's a wonderful guy, too. But we used to play, you know, it was one thing we used to do in Washington is we play, we'd play ball at 4 o'clock every day. Knock each other around, Republicans, Democrats. We got along. We had a lot of fun. And once a year, we'd play that basketball game. We'd play a baseball game, too. And uh, that was always a lot of fun. Uh, you know, the coach was a guy named Silvio Conti from Massachusetts. And he, just, he, let me, he just kept me on the bench for two or three years. And then somebody got hurt. I played shortstop. I went four for five. No errors in the field. I got named MVP. And they asked Conti, well, you're such a judge of talent. Why didn't you play the kid? He said, well, I didn't want to bring him along too fast. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sports is great. I but, just love it. And, you know, people say, do you watch, like, news and all that? And I say, I watch the Golf Channel. I watch, you know, I watch ESPN. I, I have uh, the Bleacher Report on my uh, iPad. I mean, I love sports, you know. But how important is a sports <laughs> background in being in politics? Does well, it help I don't know about that, Dan. I mean, you don't want to be a nerd. I mean, if you're a sports person, you're going to be a pretty regular guy. And but as a kid, competition wise, well, no? as a kid, we used to. That's all we did was play ball, play baseball, play basketball up at the schoolyard. It was a magical time because there were enough kids to really be able to play with a, you know full teams and all that. And so, you know, we we a lot of time we didn't have a right fielder. So when somebody would hit it to the right of second base, we'd spend a half an hour yelling and screaming at each other about whether it was fair or foul. And that's where I kind of learned how to argue. It's when I learned about competition. I was always smaller than everybody else, so I had to, you know, really work at it. it is, it's great. And sports is, is just fantastic. And, um, you know, what can I say? So I follow a lot of it. You know, I've been following the Masters, of course. Um, I've been amazed at Spieth and what he did yesterday. But uh, would you rather be – did you want to be a politician or an athlete growing up? No, I never thought I would be an athlete. Um I don't, you know, I wanted to be a lawyer. Just one thing kind of led to another and, you know, things happened. It kind of worked out one foot in front of the other. But I just, I love, I just love to follow it. It's like so relaxing to me. You know, I'm so mad that the Masters isn't on at this point. I woke up this morning. <laughs> I tried to put it on. You get these little snippets on the news and that's about it. Have you played Augusta? Yes. Yeah. How'd you do? Well, I, I'm kind of like bragging now. Okay, the people are tired of this, right? My staff is here, and they're like, "What?" Are they rolling know? their eyes? Look, yeah, <laughs> they are. But I went. To, I tell you, the first time I went, I went twice. I've been invited again, but I just haven't gone back. Um, but the first time I went, I we they used to have a kind of an old Dan, an old uh, practice range, and they've redone the whole thing. But when we were there the first time. You know, I, they told me the caddies bet on you. They watch you swing on the practice range, and then they lay down bets. So we got to the 18th hole, and I forgot. I mean, up to that point, I'd forgot about the betting. So I hit my ball out by the sand trap on the left. Now, today, I think you have to hit that 300 yards, but we were playing the members' tees. And I remember I was 155 yards from the, uh, from the pin. I told the caddy to give me a 7-iron. And he said, no, you need to hit a six. And we argued back and forth. And finally, I remembered, hey, they bet on you. So I said, okay, give me the six. So I hit the six and knocked it in the hole for a two. So you got an eagle on 18. Yeah, and I looked at the caddy and I said, I told you it was the six. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was a great, it was really remarkable. I got traded on the first tee by the caddy. Yes, there you I go. didn't realize. Have you played a bunch yeah, there? Twice. But twice? a guy, my caddy had my clubs. And next thing I know, the other, an, <laughs> the other caddy has got my clubs. I said, what just happened? He said, I traded for you. So, but the experience was great. You know, you have such a great job and with such a great crew, and I wish everybody could see your studio. So how did all this happen for you? How did it all start? Did you want to do radio when you were a kid? Or how, how did this all happen? I wanted to be in sports, but I didn't know how to be in sports. But I just started consuming as much sports as possible, trivia, 
Um, I, I wanted to be prepared if I ever got the opportunity. And, you know, you may not look the right way or you may not sound the right way, but I wanted to have the knowledge there if I was ever, you know, got the opportunity to do it. So I, I did some radio and then got into TV, went to CNN, and then from CNN I went to ESPN and spent 18 years there and then decided that I wanted to do it on my own terms with my own guys. And, uh, you know, we just did it in a man cave there. So I was lucky. But the 18 years at ESPN helped me prepare for no this moment. No question about that. Yeah. Yes. Um, Although you walked <laughs> in and you started railing against ESPN with me and Bill well, Simmons. Well, no, the only thing that I've, I've been, yeah, I, I've been asking the question because it seems as though they got a pretty heavy hand. That's what it seemed to me. I mean, <clears throat> we're all fans of ESPN because, you know, I mean, it's 24 hours. It's cool. It's fun. Of course, we all love the commercials and, you know, the, the commercial broadcast for ESPN. They're clever. But I, I, I was I just didn't know what to make of the whole Simmons thing. Uh, it's like there's a war there and I, I didn't understand what it was. And you're not there anymore. And I just can't figure it out if they just like if you cross them, you know, they like pound you. I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. Well, I think that, uh, boy, do I want to get into this? Well, you brought it up. Well, no, you brought it up when you walked in. I know, but then you brought it up on the air. I mean, no, I was saying to my guys, do I want to yeah. bring this up? Because I always walk down this road. And well, then maybe you should. It's not a yellow brick road. Um, I think that it's it's like most companies; they want total control. Um, but Bill Simmons wanted total control of your of the content yes. of everything. Yeah. So, like, you you get to it's a tug of war. So, you know, I was at Fox for nine years, and I was on the air at Fox News, and. They never bothered me with content. I mean, they would give me segments to do, but they never really would tell me how to do them. Never. Um, so you're saying that you would want to do certain things and they didn't want you to do them and you struggle for independence. That's understandable. Yeah, I, I think it got to the point where they had outgrown me or I would outgrown them. And, you know, I don't know. I think the same with Bill Simmons. Um, what be- makes what makes for a brilliant... You see, you're supposed to be interviewing me, but I want to interview yeah, you because this is interesting to me. What makes for a brilliant sports analyst? You know, what what is it that makes you or Simmons? Um, who would you? Who else would you put up? Up? I mean, you are, and so so is Simmons. Who else would you say would be up there? And what makes you guys what you are? Is it is it a different take on things? What is it? I think you have to be curious, and you have to question, and you have to listen when you have people on, and I think that you'll learn an awful lot that way. I think you have to be fearless at times. I think you have to be willing to put yourself out there. I don't think it's any different than a politician that you have to be able to take a stand, back up your stand, and you're going to have people coming at you from all arrows or uh, angles with you know slings and arrows. And, 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 and if you're willing to put yourself out there, I think the audience wants you to have an opinion, and they respect that. Dan, who would, of the, <clears throat> of the athletes uh, over, I can't even imagine how many you've, you've met, who would you put up and you know, kind of the top of people that you found really fascinating athletes that you were like, wow, now that's there. That person's in their own class. I think the guy who's honest because so who, most who, of, would, who would stand out for you. Uh, Barkley has <clears throat> always been honest with me. Yeah. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Has been honest with, you me. know, that's an interesting story because, you know, a lot of times, I mean, with his father, right? Like the greatest guy ever, uh, you know, it was interesting. He, I would have thought that he had the most NASCAR wins, but he's not even Mm-mm. close to it. But he generated the, uh, what the, the the spirit of the whole sport. And then you would have thought, well, Junior, you know, can Junior really, you know, I mean, he's Junior, right? But this guy has been terrific, hasn't he? Great for the sport. And imagine going back to the scene of where your dad died, and he does that twice a year at Daytona. Hundreds of laps, and you're going by where your father died. And to be able to, to talk about that is, I'm always, I marvel whenever Junior brings it up. I don't know if I could do that. I go by where my dad died, and I do that twice a year at races. So uh, he's just been honest about the most personal thing to him is his father dying. And I, I don't, I don't want to waste the audience's time. If you're tuning in or staying in your car... Yeah. I want you to stay five minutes later and be late for work because I'm going to give you something. Yeah, that's really cool. Let me, and it's interesting, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, why is it that people are so drawn to this? I think it's, um, it's human excellence, isn't it? And, and foibles at times, you know, the guy that, you know, bumps the ball out of bounds or the, 
You know what I think is a really terrible story now, and I don't know what to make of it, is, is this story of, uh, of Sharapova. You know, I, I can't figure out if she did something wrong. I mean, is this, was, this an, it, was this a performance enhancement drug, or was this a medical thing? What was the story? Now, she's used it for a long time. Right. But they changed the rule. Did she, do you think? I'm going to guess, well, they're all, there's a, a list of things that you can't take. Now, whether she didn't click on it, as she said, and look at the list that's on there, then that's her fault. Um, they're viewing it as a performance-enhancing drug. So you had the opportunity. They gave you the information. If you, you know, chose to ignore it or, you know, you just missed it, you still have to pay the price. I don't know how heavy the price is, but it's already been heavy. A lot of these sponsors have dropped Oh, I their... know. I know. Let me ask you a bunch well, of things. Well, wait. Can, I, I, can yeah. I take a break here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. And uh, you got to pay for this. Yes, I do. Yes, and it's expensive. I got to pay for all these <laughs> secret service guys around here and your coffee that I got you. Uh, and if you want to shoot hoops during the break, you can, or you want to. We're going to talk more. You want to go the golf I'm, simulator? No, I, I, you're, you're done. You hit, hit, hit it on the green. Okay, you just right. walk away. Okay, all right, fair <laughs> enough. All right, so we'll talk to the Ohio Governor John Kasich, who's uh, joining us here in the man cave. We'll come back. Also, I want to see. If the governor will do a Jim Nance impersonation, since we have a contest today, are you capable of a Jim Nance impersonation? No, I'm not good at it. it no, no, I don't think so. Well, but. you don't have to sound exactly like him. It's just more of you welcome people on the air at Augusta. Like, well, like well, you're sort hosting. Of like, sort of like, we're here at Augusta, and I have to really act like I like Nick Faldo. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, friends. All right, we'll come back. We'll come back with the governor after this on the Dan Patrick Show. We're continuing with the Ohio governor, Republican presidential candidate, John Kasich, joining us here in the man cave. I think you could stay here all day there, governor. Well, we were, t were talking about, you know, your guy was in here talking about Ohio State, and I was talking about Woody Hayes. And Woody you know, people remember him, you know, because slugging that guy. A lot of people think, you know, he was a diabetic. Maybe he hadn't taken his medication. And because Woody was loved his players, his players loved him. He didn't take, you know, contracts. They tried to make a movie of his life. He told me he went out to Hollywood, didn't like it, came home, didn't want any of that. But I'll tell you a funny story. And this is kind of Woody. They have this dedication of the Jesse Owens Memorial outside Ohio Stadium, and I read about it in the paper. So I go up. I figure there'll be thousands of people. I get there. It's raining. There's, like, no one there. The President University, Woody, the Owens family, a couple other people, they do the dedication, and I'm standing with Woody and Mrs. Owens, and I look at Woody. I say, Coach, at Jesse Owens, greatest athlete you'd ever seen, huh? Woody goes, oh, no, no, no. Paul Warfield, no, that was a great athlete. The wide receiver. Yeah, but I mean, that was Woody, though. He was direct. He was, I mean, he was really something else. So so let's talk a little NBA. So what do you think? Well, wait, wait, let me get a, give, yeah. let me get a political question in here. Is this a, has this been a good year for politics? I don't think so. I think it's been, no, I don't think it's been good. I think that people are just like, what is going on? And that's not a good thing. I mean, there's been there's been very little about issues and a whole lot about personalities and name calling, and that's not the way it. You know, if you want to go see if you want to go see a good hockey game, you don't want to have a fight every five minutes. You know, if you go to a, a car race, you know, you don't want to just see a crash all the time. And it's like that's what it's been: just crashes and fights. And I don't think it's good. I don't think it's healthy. Maybe it's just what we're going through. People are unsettled, Dan. They think they're getting ripped off. And, um, and some of this is being fed by the media itself, you know, stirring people up. You know, I, I remember that segment they used to run about the guy who was surfing in Hawaii who was on food stamps, you know. So they take these things and they blow them up, and it just infuriates people. And, um, you know, and the other thing is, I tell you what's driving people crazy. Their kids go to college and then they get out and they can't find a job. And it just, it, they think the system isn't working for them. So there is a, a palpable frustration, maybe an anger, but you have two ways of looking at it. Either you go and you fix it, or all you do is drive people down into the ditch farther. I don't think driving them into the ditch farther is a good thing. I think it's better to tell them how you fix it. All right, to finish this sentence, then we'll uh, do one NBA question. Uh, what do you mean one? Is it... I have two. Okay. And we'll do two. Okay. We'll do. Uh, if Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. He's not going to be. So I'm not even going there. What are you, like a political reporter? This is what I get all day long. I thought I was in here to have fun. Well, I thought I'd sneak a couple in. Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay, sneak one more in. <laughs> 
He's not. I don't believe he's going to be the nominee. Look, here's where we're going, just for your edification. I'm just There's saying, go- if he was. But, but if, you know, what if you, okay, what if you were my vice president's pick, if I were the nominee? What would you say? Yes? Yes, I would. Would you? Yes, I would. But if what asked, about, I will serve. Well, what about all the dirt that will come out of ESPN about you? I think we could still be that strong that we could get past this. <laughs> and I got big hands, too. My hand size is big, if that matters as well. Yeah, here's where we're going, just so people know. We're going to go to a convention. It's going to be really something we haven't seen since, like, 1948. And, um, and the delegates are going to get there, and they're going to figure out who, win, who can win in the fall and who could be president. It's going to be very interesting. And you're going to spend time talking about it even here because it's going to dominate the news, and uh, it's going to be something to see. Could you take Trump? No. Physically? Could I take him? Physically? Uh, Wrestling match? Well, how about, how about in foul shooting? Oh, I, I take yeah, I, I would take you with yeah, foul shooting. I wasn't that hot today, though. How about golf? He's pretty good. At golf? Yeah. Have he, you played with him? He, he nudges things a little bit. You mean he gives a little foot wedge? <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't use a foot wedge in golf. I, I, well, he almost thinks that he's presidential even yes, before I got you. all of this. Okay, now, okay. hit me with a couple NBA all questions. All right, here. so what, I, what do you think about the fact that these old timers are just talking about how they would shut down Steph Curry and this whole business of putting him down? What, what, what's wrong with these guys? But it's territorial, though, Governor, that you feel strongly about. If I said, you know, favorite football team, you might say the Buckeyes from 1974, yeah. even though today's teams yeah. at Alabama would beat them. I think that they just, they're proud of their era yeah. in what they did. Um, I do think that the Bulls of the 90s would beat Golden State. Yeah. I do think the Celtics and Lakers from the 80s would beat Golden State. I just hate to see we denigrate today because of what we saw yesterday. And that's not fair to the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, I the, the question that has to be asked about Golden State, because it's been written a little bit about are they changing the very nature of the game? In other words, you know, you think about the forward pass, change football. Okay, you think about, uh, I don't know what you think, the live ball maybe in baseball. I don't know. Different things that come along that change the whole sport. Fosbury flop. Remember that guy jumped Dick, over the Dick thing Fosbury. in a different way? Yes. Have the, bull, have, the, have the Warriors fundamentally changed the way that, uh, that the NBA works. But only if you have the players to be able to play that way. Because you can have guys who can jack it up from 35 feet. It's They make it from 35 yeah. feet. They shot, I think, close to 80% in the third quarter last night. I mean, that's crazy for a jump shooting team. So they're changing the style, but you have to have the players to fit this style. I do have a sports politic question. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Can we make Monday after the Super Bowl a national holiday? It should be. I mean, there's no productivity whatsoever. Exactly. Right? Uh, would you? You, you yeah. got our votes right there. Yeah, I think it should be. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that under consideration. Maybe I could get that done in the first hundred days. Uh, who's gonna, win, <laughs> who's gonna win the Masters? Uh, well, I picked Jason Day, but uh, I think it's, it's Rory or Spieth. Who do you got? Uh, you know what? I, I think you're right. I mean, Jason. Well, you know, he's still not out of he it. He stumbled yesterday. But uh, you know, there's. Uh, McElroy has seems like he's got the attitude. I mean, just how do you know? How about this guy DeChambeau? What's the story the with amateur. him? The amateur. He's, he's cha- all of his clubs are the same length. Yeah. You know what I read today? I read they said asked him if he was nervous. He said no. And this is really interesting. He said I'm not nervous because I've been saved by grace. You you know what that means? That means he's got a very strong faith, personal faith. If that's what that means. I read one line today that that is what he said. I've not read it anywhere else. But you know, that belief in a higher power, that he's, it's sort of like me running for president. I've been very loose, having a great time, because I'm carrying out a mission. And I'm saved by grace, too. So I think, you know, when, when everything isn't put into achieving that thing that's right in front of you, but you have perspective, it gives you a chance to be... To be loose, I just, and, you know, and we get it different ways. But I think that was interesting what I read, and um, I just know perspective makes it easier for you to perform because your ego is not caught in the middle of it. I'll leave you with this question: Would you rather shoot hoops with Steph Curry or play golf with Jordan Spieth? Oh, I, I well, that's a tough one, boy. Well, if I'm president, I could have both. Have you played hoops against uh, President Obama? No, but I play golf with him. 
I played golf with Obama, Biden, and John Boehner. John Boehner invited me to this, this golf tournament. And Joe Biden was my partner. And uh, when we showed up, he had been like practice. He was like a horse that had been lathered up. I mean, he was just dripping in sweat. <laughs> And, we, and Boehner <laughs> announces that he's going to have the president as a partner, and I'm going to have Biden. And Biden's, you know, he's, his reputation is he's a very good golfer. We were in the cart on the first hole, and then I never saw him because he was using, <laughs> he was using his tree wood all the time. <laughs> you know, Dan? He couldn't find him? And I was at the convention, and I said, you know, <laughs> Biden says this about Republicans. Well, he also says he's a good golfer. And I know that's not true, so why would I believe anything else? Poor Joe. You got you know it, poor Joe. Could you have Urban Meyer as your running mate? Maybe no, he's Secretary from Ohio. of Defense. Well, you know, I'll tell you something about Urban and all these big time football coaches. Man, the focus is unbelievable, Dan. They don't they see there you talk about a horse with blinders on. They just run and everything they do, everything they have. Wouldn't they put Urban in, Meyer scare the hell out of Putin? I'll tell you something about Meyer. He's he's a very tough, firm fo Do you know him? Yeah, we've had him on quite a few times. Yeah, I mean, he is really a focused guy, isn't he? I saw him the other day. He did it. He endorsed me. You know, I saw him the other day. I said, how's it going? He goes, well, I don't have any players. They all graduated. I said, don't be talking to me about that, coach. You'll lie. <laughs> and you know, they'll be good again. He's Think about the Big Ten in football, right? I mean, for a, se for a second here. You know, there was a theory that the Big Ten, you know, dominated. Then everything went south because of television and weather and all that. But when you think about the Big Ten now and you think about Urban Meyer, the king of the coaches in the Big Ten, and you take Harbaugh, you take Dan Tony, and uh, those three guys in and of themselves, they're changing. And, of course, maybe in Wisconsin where they always seem to have good teams, they're changing the nature of northern Big Ten football. I know. It's, it's interesting to see. This Faster. Brought, More athletic. They right? brought the SEC, I think, in there. All right, I, I have to go. You have to go. I Bobby. have to go. You're more than welcome to stay, but I have to go. <laughs> He's the Ohio governor, presidential candidate, and uh, good luck. We appreciate it. It was fun. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.